The NFL's average catchable throw rate from a clean pocket is 79.4% and 60.5% when the quarterback is pressured. But on a fourth and 18, with two minutes left in the game, down four points to the Bills in Buffalo, Kirk Cousins threw a ball that had just a 28.8% chance of being caught. Justin Jefferson went up with one hand while falling backwards and snatched it away. It was easily the catch of the year. It may be the catch of the decade. Right now, Justin Jefferson is having the best career start of any wide receiver in NFL history. He's only 24, but he's putting together a resume that's already broken records. How soon will he become the undisputed GOAT receiver? Most say the best receiver the Vikings ever had arrived there in 1998, but a few were starting to wonder if the best Vikings receiver was actually born the following year. June 16, 1999, Justin Jamal Jefferson hails from the greater New Orleans area. In high school, Jefferson was only a three-star recruit. He wasn't even considered one of the top 300 best wide receivers in the nation. Luckily, living in Louisiana, LSU was right in his backyard, and this was where Jefferson committed to play. His older brother Jordan Jefferson was also quarterback at LSU when Justin was still in grade school. Justin started developing his football IQ early while watching film with his older brother. His high level of field awareness would later make him the player he is today. However, his college career started off in the gutter. In his freshman year, he only played in two games and didn't record a single catch. But Jefferson picked things up quickly the next season and became the Tigers' leading receiver with 54 receptions for 875 yards and six touchdowns in 2018. In two games that season, he went over the 100-yard mark. In 2019, Jefferson stepped it up even more. 111 receptions for 1,540 yards and 18 touchdowns. Justin Jefferson had turned himself into a legitimate draft prospect and declared for the 2020 NFL Draft, though he wasn't as sought after as you would think. Not a single wide receiver went in the top 10, and four receivers came off the board before him. Henry Ruggs at 12th overall, Jerry Judy at 15th, C.D. Lamb at 17th, and Jalen Rieger at 21st. Minnesota didn't realize how lucky they were getting Justin Jefferson at 22nd. The Louisiana kid would move north for his chance in the league. And as soon as Justin Jefferson suited up with the Vikings, he put Minnesota on notice. Word was that the best wide receiver to put on a Vikings uniform was Randy Moss, and he lit up the land of 10,000 lakes in his first year. Moss's 17 receiving touchdowns his rookie year led the league in 1998. And though Jefferson only had seven touchdowns his first year, he beat Moss in everything else. In the same amount of games, his 88 receptions surpassed Moss's 69 receptions, and his 1,400 receiving yards was higher than Moss's 1,313. Jefferson still found room for improvement. In his second year, he had over 100 receptions, something Moss didn't do until his fifth year. And Jefferson was averaging 95.1 yards per game, Moss didn't average over 90 a game until his sixth year. The comparisons will be there for a while. Granted, Moss was 6'4 and 210 pounds, Jefferson is just 6'1 and 195, but he doesn't play like it. He plays much bigger, like he has a cheat code against NFL defenses. Even Randy Moss has said Jefferson is the best receiver in the league today. You can see how his high IQ makes a big impact on the field. 6'1 isn't necessarily small but it sure isn't the tallest when it comes to receivers. Jefferson knew coming into the NFL that his footwork and route running would need to be better than everyone else's. And it seems like he has put the work in. Even when he's matched up against a veteran cornerback like Stephon Gilmore, he can beat him one-on-one. -on -one. Jefferson has developed extremely precise movements and paired that well with deception. His elite body control also lets him mask his route so defenders are quick to lose him. Jefferson can dominate any and every route, this is a result of his dedication in the film room, where he studies the strengths and weaknesses of individual defenders and coverages with his teammate Adam Thielen, who is nine years older. Now, pair all of that with his speed and agility, and you get a receiver who will not just burn you, but also get a high number of yards after the catch. In his four-year career, he has 5,899 receiving yards. 1,827 of those yards came after the catch. That's roughly 30% of his total yardage. He leaves defenders in the dust so often he ends up seeing open field in front of him. 
But even when a defender isn't letting Jefferson get yards after the catch, even when they're trying to jam him at the line, he's still a problem because his body control and hand strength when catching the ball is different. Doesn't matter if a defender is on him. Justin Jefferson has been so unstoppable that some defenders give up and just try holding him. Take a five yard penalty and call it a win. Holding, defense number five. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. And there it is, listen, I don't, I don't mind that. But Jefferson will still make defenders pay. He has enough strength to break free from a hold and make a play on the ball. How about when the defender jams him at the line and holds him and manages to do so without getting a flag? Can Jefferson then be stopped? No, he's a route finisher. And he doesn't just run the route, he completes it with the ball caught securely in his hands. So in those first two seasons in Minnesota, Jefferson was praised as an outstanding talent. But why did it feel like he wasn't getting enough credit? Well, his numbers were great, but he's been on a Minnesota team that went 7-9 and 8-9 his first two seasons, missing the playoffs. And since no one was seeing him come playoff time, Jefferson was only able to make his big plays in the regular season. Then the 2022 season came around, and it was time for Justin Jefferson to put the whole league on notice. He started off with a bang. The two-time reigning MVP Aaron Rodgers and his Packers came into Minnesota's house, and Jefferson didn't blink. He caught nine balls for 184 yards, one long ball that went for 64 where Jefferson showcased his elite route running, and of course, that yards after the catch. He had two touchdowns and they trampled the Packers 23-7. Jefferson and the Vikings kept playing well. In week four, they improved to three and one after narrowly beating the Saints 28-25 behind Jefferson's 10 receptions for 147 yards. The following week, Jefferson went off again, this time against the Bears. 12 receptions, 154 yards. As more defensive coordinators were game planning against him, Jefferson showed off his mental toughness with his consistency and his physical toughness with his ability to hang on to the ball while taking hits. Week nine, they beat the Commanders 2017. Jefferson had seven receptions for 115 yards and one spectacular touchdown where the defender was practically in his shirt and he still made a fantastic move to pull it down. The Vikings were now 7-1. They were turning heads, as was Jefferson. But it was time to head to Buffalo and see how they fared against a high-caliber team. The game went back and forth. It was close the whole way through, and even though Jefferson was having himself an afternoon, the Bills had the edge. They led 27-23 with two minutes left in regulation. The Vikings had the ball, but they had gotten backed up into a 4th and 18 in their own territory. It was do or die. Kirk Cousins launched the ball about 28 yards and Jefferson leapt in the air for the ball. All the work that Jefferson had been putting in came together on this one catch. He ran his route perfectly and wound up exactly where Cousins hoped he would be. His athletic ability allowed him to jump into the air, twist his body, and get his hand in the right place. The defender behind him was clamping two hands around the ball, but Jefferson used his strength to pull the football away with just one hand. His body control allowed him to keep the ball in his hand to make sure it never hit the ground. It wasn't just the catch, it was the moment. It was grab this ball or lose the game. After the Vikings converted, the wild game continued, which led to overtime, and the Vikings winning 33-30 and improving to eight and one. Jefferson had 10 catches, 193 yards, and one touchdown that game. Jefferson helped Minnesota win the NFC North with a 13-4 record. He finally helped his team get into the playoffs, and he finished the year with absurd numbers. 128 receptions, most in the league, and 1,809 receiving yards, also most in the league. He tacked on eight receiving touchdowns and one rushing touchdown for good measure. Jefferson became the youngest player in NFL history to lead the league in both receptions and receiving yards. He also won Offensive Player of the Year that year. His 4,825 receiving yards in his first three seasons is the most by any player in history in that same time span. The previous record was 4,163 yards held by, guess who, Randy Moss. Unfortunately, the 2023 season saw Jefferson get injured and miss significant time. However, he still played in 10 games, racked up five touchdowns and 1,074 receiving yards. Kirk Cousins got injured too, so it was pretty much a lost season for the team. Now, Kirk's out and the Vikings brought in new blood at quarterback, 
J.J. McCarthy. And they just locked up Jefferson with the largest non-quarterback contract in league history, $140 million over four years. Justin Jefferson has put us all on notice. In his short amount of time in the league, he has been tearing it up. We are already seeing record numbers and absurd catches. If his trajectory continues, step aside Randy Moss, step aside Jerry Rice, the Louisiana kid might soon become the greatest receiver of all time.